together. Few people know Donald Trump's vision for the border better than the person who ran the Department of Homeland Security during his administration. Chad Wolf was Trump's acting Homeland Security Secretary, and he joins me now. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, well, just all that comment made by, by President Biden there saying that, that Trump should join him. Uh, I mean, should he? Why not take him up on his offer if Biden is ready to make real concessions on the border as he was in this Senate immigration deal? Well, Kaylin, thanks for having me on. I don't know that we need to overly complicate things. Uh, President Biden has all the authority he needs today to solve this crisis, and he can do it tomorrow with a really a stroke of a pen. The authorities that we saw during the Trump administration that were highly effective in getting the border under control and stopping the mass numbers of illegal migration that we see today. And so you can wait on a Senate bill. You can uh, ask others to join you. Or you can just simply do your job and use the authorities that you have. And I think that's that's the frustration a lot of Americans see today is they, they want the job done and they want some action. They want some results. And I would say to the Biden administration, use your authorities to get get the American people what they want. Yeah. So there are some executive actions based on our reporting that, that, Trump, that Biden is considering taking. But I'm curious because, you know, when Trump was in office, he also took a lot of executive action on the border. Uh, not as much as what Biden has done, but if you look at what he, he his executive executive actions, there were 35 of them, and I looked at the numbers today. Almost 94 percent failed to stay to stand up to legal challenges. So, what's the point in, in kind of signing an executive order if it's not actually going to pass muster with the courts? Well, I think there's things that you can do without signing an executive order. You can use the authority that you have to restart the Remain in Mexico program. You don't need an executive order to do that. Secretary Mayorkas has the, all the authority that he needs to do that. That was one of the most single effective programs to end catch and release and to get, again, that border under control and to stop these frivolous asylum uh, uh, grants and, and complaints that we see today. So there's things that you can do without an executive order. It's just existing authority that Congress has passed many years ago, decades ago, that resides both with the president and with the secretary. You don't have to do an EO. Uh, you can just simply put it in place today. That's restarting border wall construction, restarting our asylum cooperative agreements. And so there's a number of things here that have been tested by the courts, such as Remain in Mexico has well, been validated on, by the courts to be effective and legal. On Remain in Mexico, you know, we hear this from Republicans a lot that want it to be back in place, but the Mexican government doesn't want it. They've made that clear. So, so I mean, it's not really possible, is it, for the United States to put it in place if the Mexican government says, we don't want this? Well, I think it is. I think the Biden administration really hasn't fought hard for it. Uh, you've got to negotiate with the Mexican government, just as we did in 2018 and 2019, to get that in place. Uh, that was the same response the Mexican government had when we talked to them initially about that program. Um, and so there's a lot of things that can be done. You just It takes leadership, it takes will, and it takes some hard negotiations and some hard conversations. Uh, but you need to do that. It's an effective program, and it will work again. Uh, President Biden spoke right after we heard from your former boss, Donald Trump, also on the border today. I just want to play a little bit of what Trump said in his remarks uh, in Eagle Pass. He said the people that are coming into our country and they're coming from jails and they're coming from prisons and they're coming from mental institutions and they're coming from insane asylums and they're terrorists. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. As you know, the border is a legitimate issue, but why make things up while talking about it? Why not just talk about the border I itself? I don't know that the president, uh, former President Trump is, is making anything up. I think if you look at all of the, the uh, arrests that ICE made last year, half of them, over 50 percent, were criminal aliens. And so I think what he's saying is there are some bad individuals coming into this country illegally, through a wide open southern border, and we need to be concerned about that. And he's also talking about no the number of, of countries and the number of nationalities that are being people. picked up along the border. Sorry, but Caitlin, what was that? When he, the, we've asked the Trump campaign the first time, it was years ago, when he, he said that mental institutions were emptying their places, that doctors were complaining they didn't have any patients in their mental institutions in other countries because they were all being sent across the southern border. And there's no evidence to back that up. I mean, why make that claim that's not true when you can actually point to legitimate things on the border, I think is my point here. 
Yeah. So look, I, I think there's a, uh, there's a lot of evidence. There's a lot of evidence that a number of bad individuals that are coming across that border that are criminals in their home countries, in countries in, in Central America, South America, and Venezuela, and the like, and they're coming across this country. And how do we know that? Because we eventually pick them up and we do arrest them. And as we start to look into their backgrounds, we understand that they have criminal records in their home country. So I think that's the concern. And that's what Americans are, are really concerned about is not only the illegality of what's going on along that southern border, but the safety and the security uh, in communities like Athens, Georgia and elsewhere. I mean, you're making one point, and I understand that, but he's making another about mental institutions. There, there's just no evidence to back it up. And I think I, I don't understand why you keep saying it if it's not true. Well, again, I, I think the president obviously speaks for himself, but he has real life experience, obviously being president for four years, understanding the types of individuals. I was in the Oval Office and briefing him many times on the types of individuals and the types of groups that are coming across that border. Right, but you never he saw evidence of the I mental think most institutions. What reasonable Americans right, see is that there are a number of bad individuals that continue to come across this border that the Biden administration is, uh, they know this. They have the same stats and the same statistics and they're not putting any policies in place to stop them. Well, they have signed a lot of executive orders, but okay, I just, I, I wanted, uh, I didn't hear any evidence about this one thing. We still haven't heard anything. I just wanted to ask you about that. Chad Wolf, as always, thank you for coming on tonight. Appreciate you joining us. All right, thank you. Up next, our exclusive.